We are live. I'm back with one of my friends, a young man that I met. When's it been, Louis? Maybe 16 months ago or so, probably down there. Yeah, around that. Yeah. Singapore and Kuala Lumpur. And I even yep. put a Good picture up on, <laughs> on Facebook about you getting tricked to carry the water up those stairs. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that at the Batu Caves. Badu Caves, Badu Caves, yeah. The, those monkeys still in our food. I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that as well. Uh, Lewis is a, is a coach, he's a speaker, he's an entrepreneur, property investor, I believe, as well. And he yep. speaks proper English, and so he corrects me <laughs> constantly. Uh, how are you doing, uh, Lewis? I'm very well, thank you. Very well today. Slightly tired, been having far too much fun down in Cape Town. You're but in that, that, all good. You're in South Africa traveling, and you're heading back to the UK right now, is that right? Uh, no, I'm on my way to Johannesburg to help out and do some coaching, and then I'm going back to the UK. I see. All right. Well, I've got five questions for you, and uh, we have an international audience, and a lot of them, you know, they look at the market 24 hours a day, so I think it could fit into their, their style as well. Well, number one, why did you get into trading? For me, I was working in an office job that I just knew was never going to give me the time freedom or the income that I wanted to basically live the lifestyle that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So though I enjoyed the job, I realized very, very quickly it wasn't going to give me the life that I wanted longer term. So when I heard about investing and I heard about trading and I could see the potential for being anywhere in the world with my laptop, with an internet connection and making money, um, that, that attracted me quite strongly. Um, so I just decided to learn how to do it correctly and, and get on with it really. So time, freedom, lifestyle, getting away from something that necessarily wasn't what your, your vision was for your life and finding something new. Is that right? Yeah. I love those yeah. answers. Uh, number two, what is your trading edge? My trading edge, I think, really comes down to um, the education I have, which has taught me how to understand um, data and track data. So markets change conditions change and if you know how to record the data you've got in the markets from a your live trades but also the testing you're doing of those markets and the strategies that you're trading mm -hmm. you can amend those strategies over time seeing what is actually working and what is not actually working so mm -hmm. i say that that is my edge really is is being able to a record that data correctly but b understand that data yeah. You know, statistics and numbers do matter. I think it intimidates some people about markets, but the reality is you don't have to, to be able to build algorithms, um, but you do mm -hmm. have to understand numbers at a, at a base level, you know, expectancy, yeah. drawdown, risk management, things like that. I think it's a wonderful answer too. Uh, you had a good coach. You must have had a really good coach then to, to make you become data driven in your analytics and your decision making. I, I like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, especially number, as someone who isn't analytical by nature. So I'm not, I'm expressive, hence why I'm traveling around the world all the time. Mm -hmm. So I want experience, I want fun. Being data driven doesn't come naturally to me. So it's a discipline I had to build into my trading very intentionally to actually make myself successful. Interesting. Uh, what is your daily routine? Daily routine uh, <laughs> in terms of trading or just general life? <laughs> hey man, it's a trading <laughs> conversation, but I guess it could fit into the whole thing, right? Yeah, so uh, I, I get up in the morning. Um, I like to uh, read when I get up. So I go for a walk, I read, and then I come back to my, uh, my, my home office, my room, if I'm at home, or if I'm in a hotel somewhere, come back to my hotel room, uh, open my charts, load up my charts, and I've already created on a Sunday um, a watch list of markets I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. So I then each, each morning of that week go back to my watch list check how the markets have performed because so I'm primarily a swing trader now and um, it works in terms of the flexibility so that I'm looking at um, entries on the day charts looking at the weekly charts for supporting evidence so um, 30 minutes to an hour a day trading maximum as a swing trader um, so yeah I'll load my charts up check against my watch list what's happened in the markets to see if there's any change in the strategy that I'm looking at if that strategy criteria have been met on that market from the watch list. If it hasn't, then I'll either keep it on my watch list or if it's done something different, which means it no longer fits my strategy, I'll take it off of my watch list. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the process I do Monday to Friday. Um, and then I'll start up a new watch list again on the Sunday. So creativity in the morning, it sounds like, I mean, writing, reading, and then starting to study, and then you apply it step by step. I, I like it. I think it very much connect to it as well. You know, I'm an early morning guy. I like to trade in the morning. Uh, I trade through the day as well. Uh, the, by the time I get to the evening, though, my brain usually isn't 
isn't the same point, you know? So I do most of my best work in the morning. And on a day-by-day basis, I don't really do a lot of testing. You know, I do that on the weekends or the evenings when I have time. But really, it's just about yeah. executing your edge. I, I love your answer there. Uh, number four, what are your trading goals? My trading goals are to achieve around 5% per month return on my capital. But um, I, I say that, really, for me, that's kinda, that was kind of how I set goals early on. Now, my trading goals are more around... Um, process Mm -hmm. so am I meeting my process correctly so that's kind of where I focus my goals now so my overarching like profit goals are around five percent per month Mm -hmm. Um, but really on a day-to-day basis my trading goals are um, have I followed my process have I stuck to my strategy have I been placing good trades and following good trading processes basically Mm -hmm. have I been following correctly the systems that I put in place which match my data and therefore, is, I'm, I'm sticking to the edge I've got in trading and actually doing things correctly. Because if know, I defer from that, that's when I start to not have as, as good results. What's really interesting about that, I was, I was just on a conversation this morning with a, with a student of mine, uh, part of our community over at uh, Tackle Trading, listening to our podcast and whatnot. And she was looking at her results and she was kind of scratching her head. And I said, you're doing really, really well. She says, Tim, I haven't made any money in two weeks, you know, and she had a good positive curve in January and early February. And I said, that's not how you judge whether you're doing really, really well or not. You know, you can have a week of trading where you make your 2% or your 3% or whatever. You're on your way to your 5% monthly target and you can feel like a rock star and you can have the next week of trading where actually you were just as good and you did everything you were supposed to do and make no money, you know? Yeah. And I think any veteran trader knows it's not about the short-term result. It's about the equity curve and staying (laughs) disciplined and making sure we don't lose our mind, right? Uh, So much of this is psychological and emotional. And I I love, I love that answer. That's a, that's a very experienced veteran answer. It tells me a lot about you, Lewis. Uh, There's no doubt. Good answer. Good answer. Number five, (laughs) what advice would you give a new trader? What advice would I give to a new trader? Hmm. Um, don't be in a hurry take time learn the skill correctly and focus on your data mm-hmm. creating data tracking data and analyzing data those are the things which will give you the edge um i think i speak to a lot of new traders and they are always desperate to make money straight away <laughs> which i understand mm-hmm. and is is good to have that greed element because that's going to keep you going but a lot of people I think early on don't necessarily give trading the respect and time it takes as a skill to actually learn, learn their craft correctly. And trading is a craft. Mm -hmm. So giving yourself patience and time, even if it takes you a year, even if it took you two years to learn the skill correctly, you've then got that skill for life. So I would say be patient, give it the time and the respect that it requires and focus on your data. Trust the process, right, Lewis? Trust the process, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right. Uh, guys, we've been speaking with Lewis Crompton, who's a trader out of the UK. And uh, I want to say London, but I know that that's just a, like calling it New York City when you might live in Queens. Where do you live in, in, in London? Uh, I live in North London, a place called High Barnet. I see. And uh, real estate property investor, uh, as well as a trader in the Forex commodity and index markets, travels the world doing it as well. Lewis, you are a scholar, a gentleman, and I know you've got a flight. So uh, we're going to kick this one. Great job, young man. Appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you.